Welcome to the Resilient Mindset Podcast, an exciting new podcast by Resilience Queen, Justine Martin. Justine is the owner and founder of the Resilient Mindset, a division of the Justine Martin Corporation. Justine draws on her years of experience and knowledge, consulting with clients to develop and sustain a positive mindset. Focused on igniting your passion, purpose and power, follow the Resilience Queen each week as she delves into the mind of her guests, exploring fascinating stories and inspiring journeys. Would you like to read more about resilience from Justine Martin? Grab one of her co-authored books, Release the Shackles, Courage and Confidence, or Raw. All available online at justinemartin.com.au forward slash shop. Welcome back, listeners. Today with me, I've got Maria, Raffaella, Marfe, Yunon, Bellalisco, and she is best known for her success in the beauty pageant industry. Having won prestigious awards locally and internationally, such as Miss Philippines Australia 1998 and the Philippines World 2003, and predominantly landing top five in the Miss World competition of the same year held in China, and Mrs. Philippines Global 2008. She has since gone on to channel her expertise into image consulting for Binny Bing. Filipinas since 2003, taking on the role of personally personality development director for the Miss World Philippines in 2021 and pageant director of KUMU Global Pageants on the number one live streaming app of the Philippines, KUMU. She continues on her journey in expanding her services and entrepreneur expertise, starting her own company, Marfe Management Consultancy, founded in 2015, wherein she manages talents, spearheads public relations and marketing, content creation, events management, online show production and social media management for companies and individuals all over the world. Marfe has vast experience in commercial, ramp and print modelling and even television and events hosting. She enjoys passing on her knowledge of each of her experiences through her talks, workshops and shows in which she does on a weekly basis. She is firm in her mission of making the world a brighter space as a certified life and personality development coach, sacred holder and well-being boost facilitator, wherein she helps others become the best, their best selves through positive mindset guidance. She has delved into entrepreneurship owns a sports academy, the Bellisco Unlimited Skills Academy, where she coaches tennis, as well as Marfe Management. Today, Marfe is now a certified life coach who is passionate about empowering others with her family campaign, hashtag Save Lives Online. Recently, she was awarded the 100 Most Influential Filipino Women on LinkedIn in 2021 and took a role of the Australian Region Head for KUMU. Marfe lives by her motto, the world is yours and time plus productivity equals success and aims to bring the best out of everyone around her. Lastly, the biggest reward in her life is being a mum, bringing up her own young leaders of today to her six children, Nico, 21, Mike, 18, Moses, 16, Nicole, Faith, 12, Noah, 5, and baby Milo, 1. To add to the cherry on the top is her husband, Nick Belasico, former PBA basketball player and coach who supports and mentors Mafe in all that she does. My apologies if I've mispronounced any of those words. Welcome, Marfe. That's an impressive bio that you've got. Thank you, Justine. I am so glad to be here. It's wonderful to have you here. I've been on your podcast. Now you're on mine. Yes, I love this collaboration that we're doing and uh, to empower everyone and inspire others. Uh, I love that we have the same mindset with that. Yes, we've just had a bit of a chat off camera and uh, it's going to be a hoot today, I think, and he's hoping that the uh, platform that we're recording on uh, holds together and we don't freeze. So let's get into it. What does resilience mean to you, Marfe? Wow, such a huge word, uh, you know, to have in your journey of life, right? Um, to me, that means just being a go-getter, 
someone that, you know, strives for a uh, growth mindset to always want to learn something new, whether, you know, it's a challenge or, you know, you have to uh, try, try again. Uh, mm. That's really the, the huge um, meaning for me is just to make sure that you learn something new each day and have yeah. the strength to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great uh, definition and different to what we've had previously. So I, I can really identify with what you've just said. So what's an adversity that you faced and how did you draw on your resilience to cope? Too many. <laughs> Too many to even share. Well, let's just think, pick one. <laughs> I know. Uh, for one was when I had to decide to leave my comfort zone to achieve, uh, you know, um, a bigger purpose. Uh, I thought there was uh, many signs that was telling me to move back to, uh, you know, my, my country. Or, of course, Australia has been such a, an amazing home for me. But yeah. Being from the Philippines and knowing that it was a third world country and just what I learned for growing up in the in Australia, just the strength and of course the the confidence and just the resilience mindset, yeah. uh, like what we're talking about today, bringing that back to my family, to uh, you know fellow Filipinos uh, back in the Philippines, that was really a big jump for me because I didn't know whether I was going to be welcomed. I didn't know yeah. whether, you know, I was going to achieve what I did achieve. Uh, but looking back, I am so grateful that I did that because I wouldn't be the woman I am today. Or where you are today. Or where I am today. Or, or yeah. even being um, a mom or a wife to, to my family now. So yeah. it was really hard. You know, just yeah. leaving your comfort zone. But I think that's really something that people have to face to understand mm -hmm. that, wow, I in order for growth to happen, exactly. you exactly. have to get outside that comfort zone. Yeah. You have to push yourself. And, you know, I was talking in a previous podcast um, and we were talking about, you know, you're never too old to stop learning. And yes. to learn something new does put you outside your comfort zone and, and keeping your mind active. And, you know, he was saying, it was Trav in, in the last recording actually that, you know, people stop living at 40 and die at 80 and that next 40 years they do basically nothing. And um, I, I can't imagine life like that. Mm -hmm. I've always got something on the go and I'm always learning something new and uh, that's exciting. That gets you out of bed every morning. Exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah. we have the same wavelength. <laughs> we, <do. laughs> we, we definitely do. So... Any other adversities that you want to share since you said you've got a bucket load there? Yeah, I mean, possibly the next thing is becoming a mom. You yeah. know, I actually became a mom of three at the age of 23 because my husband had uh, my two eldest sons with his previous marriage and they were only one and three. And then wow. I had my own son, um, Moses, who's now 17. And just being a young mom, I was like, whoa, my mom of three at like, almost 24. How did, I, how did that happen? You know, and just looking back, you know, these boys were a blessing, you know, mm -hmm. they're the leaders of the family now for, for their younger siblings. And mm -hmm. I just look back, I, I did it. I still you built did. a business. I still, you know, became like a, a new mom of three and yeah. also a bonus mom. I actually learned mm -hmm. that word just recently during the pandemic, because I've always referred it to being a stepmom and Bonus mommy sounds more nice. I like that. So my daughter's my daughter's got is a bonus mum. She was uh, seventeen, nearly eighteen, when she took on uh, three uh, young children, and they were five, three, and one. And she mm -hmm. was uh, yeah, not even eighteen. And uh, you know those kids now are twelve, ten, and eight, and two of them live with her full time. And she went on to have two of her own little boys and they're now three and nearly one and um they're all my grandkids I don't see them any differently uh they're all part of the family and you know they face their own adversities each and every day and and we just surround them with love 
And, yes. You know, they build and resilience from that. Like you, I'm grateful for my parents for, for also welcoming all my children. You know, mm. uh, there's no difference. And that's how I also mother them all. Like, yeah. hey, you're all, you're all my children, whether I, you know, discipline you more or not or whatever, you're all equal. You know, I just yeah. make sure that I'm, you know, there for them whenever they need me. Like I drop everything. Mm. And that's something yeah. that I, I make sure they understand that, hey, if you need something, don't yeah. think that my work or, or anything will mm. stop me Same. from listening, right? And I've always said to my kids, you know, you can ask me any question and there will be no judgment. Yes. Just ask me. You know, See? Don't keep things a secret from me. Just ask the question. And my son's asked me some pretty who doozy questions over the years. <laughs> I think one of them was a joke and I cannot repeat it on air. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you off air and uh, uh, he'll giggle about it. He was in the army and he rang me up a little bit inebriated one night and asked me this question in front of his mates and I can hear his mates in the background going, I can't believe you asked your mum that question because I can ask my mum anything and they can. Um, yeah. I never had that relationship with my mum. I was petrified of asking yeah. uh, anything to her and, had to figure out a lot of things, the birds and the bees, periods, everything like that by myself. And yeah. um, I didn't want my children to go through and face those adversities and, and not have someone there that, that could back them up and, and, and help them. So, you know, parent differently, yeah. uh, so it speaks. So yeah, any other are adversities? Where those so the same. I think I feel like I'm TMI sometimes. Like I tell them too much. And they're like, mom, stop. You know? That's enough. Like we don't want to hear it. I'm like, okay. yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm just hearing same. it. Same. You know. Yeah, yeah same, same. Yeah. Uh, so any other adversities that you want to share? Just putting you on the spot here. I know. Uh, I guess taking that plunge and be becoming a businesswoman, you know, yeah. um, understanding what my priorities were. And really diving in and uh, owning, owning my own passion, owning my own um, independency when it comes to business. Because I thought that I needed a partner. I needed a business, uh, you know, guidance to be able to succeed. And I talk about this in, in, our, in our book, Courage and Confidence, mm -hmm. that the experience from that, re I realized that I can do it on my own. And my own husband even cheered me on, like, what are you doing? You know, own it. You yeah, know we're solopreneurs. Like there's the word entrepreneur, and we fall under that category, and we fall under mumpreneurs as well. Yeah. But I really like the solopreneur yes. title because yes. we are doing it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we do outsource things that we can't do uh, ourselves. Like uh, I'm about to outsource on uh, editing podcasts. Yeah. I'm sorry, Marfe. <laughs> and uh, uh, not that I've been doing too bad a job, but, you know, time is precious and uh, outsourcing is good. So that'll be in the next uh, the next series of podcasts. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, we all face adversities. Every single one of us, every single day will face an adversity. And mm -hmm. how you bounce back from that makes all the difference. And when you're a solopreneur or entrepreneur or you're, in a, you're a small business owner, whatever you want to title you want to give yourself, mm -hmm. it's really important to network. I find that builds resilience. That That is a coping mechanism for me that I don't feel like I'm the only one going through this. And, you know, some days it's bloody hard running your own business and, and it's not all glory, although, you know, we've won some awards for it, but uh, it's, it's, it's nice to connect and, and that's what helps me build resilience in the business world is knowing that, okay, well, that didn't work too well, but this works better and someone else has tried that and I'm going to learn from their coping mechanism of what they did in order to um, thrive a little bit more and win a few more awards to put on my shelf. <laughs> yeah. I'm cheering you on and it, you know, it goes back to your vibe right your vibe attracts your tribe and one yeah. first time I heard that I was like yes, yes. 100% you know? and, I, and I've said that repeatedly that you know we are the sum of the five people that we hang around 
Yeah. So if you're hanging around negative people, you're going to be a negative person yourself. Yes. It'll brush off with you. I mean, have you ever been out for a lunch date with a girlfriend and all she's been is negative Nancy the whole time that you're there and you come <laughs> home, you're like, why do I put myself through that? <laughs> yeah. I feel so drained. She's sucked all the energy out of me. Or it could be a hey, it could be a hey, let's not be sexist, could be a hey, you know, they've sucked all the energy out of me. And that's because you are that sum of the five person that yeah. five people that you're hanging around. So like attracts like and if you go and you're networking, whether it's on Zoom or it's face to face now, the world's opening up and you know, you hang around with positive people, chances are you'll become a positive person. Exactly. That's why I love going to the gym and, and weight training. I've never met a negative person <laughs> that trains. Yeah. Everyone's there to improve themselves. Right. One rep at a time. Yeah. And, you know, I go to the gym three days a week regardless of, you know, how shitty I'm feeling. And um, <laughs> that helps build my resilience. Yes. Just even, you know, the hardest walk is out through the front door. Mm-hmm. And that's with it anything. Is. It is. You know, it's even just getting up from your bed or open your yeah. eyes, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you still have a chance to do that, hey, do it. You know, a lot of people can. And... It's a good day for me when my feet hit that ground. Exactly. Likewise. Yeah. It's a really good day. And then it's like, okay, what have I got on for the day? What can I do? And I always turn to my trusted system and I look at my trusted system, which is constantly updated each and every night um, of what I've got on for the next day, what my A list is, what my B list is, and then just get in and do it. And, you know, people say to me, and I'm sure they say to you, Marfe, how do you do so much? How do you get it all done? (laughs) Or just like you, my trusted system is my calendar. I just make sure it's it's plotted correctly. And I double check that, triple check that like for the next few days and make sure that, okay, I am intentionally blocking this time for, let's say, my son or my daughter's whatever. And Sunday, I've solely uh, dedicated that for the family, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I have global clients, yes. But at the end of the day, the respect is there. When the trust is there, they'll know that. Well, it's boundaries as well. And I think that's, you know, in order to build resilience, you need to have your own boundaries as well. Mm -hmm. And knowing what you're comfortable in doing, knowing what your hours of work are, knowing, you know, who you let into your personal space, that all comes down to boundaries. And if you're not taught boundaries at a young age, it can put you on the wrong path. Oh, and it can totally. it can bring the wrong people into your life. So yes. that would be the first thing that I would ever work on with someone mm-hmm. is is boundaries. Yes. And putting in your calendar that you're taking Sundays off is that's yeah. your boundary. Exactly. And you know, I've had to talk to clients about texting me at two AM in the morning. <laughs> and it's like, I don't mind you texting me, but can we make it within business hours, please? Yeah. Not at two AM. Mm-hmm. And uh that again is bringing back uh you know the boundaries to me and putting me back in control of you know my phone my life my calendar (laughs) and uh doesn't then cause more adversity uh but you know keeps uh the resilience uh there as well so um who are your role models in resilience Marfe, and how do they inspire you so many. I mean, of course, I have to go back down to family. My, my parents, I saw their resilience of, again, I did the opposite. They also did the sacrificing their comfort, living in the Philippines, moving to a new country, mm-hmm. experiencing new culture, experiencing new like systems and protocols, right? And I saw them start from scratch. Like us, when we first moved there, we live in like somebody's laundry room in their backyard. Wow. You know, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is Australia. <laughs> and I was six years old. So to me, it was just like, oh, cool. We have a, you know, like a, mm-hmm. like a playhouse <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But seeing my parents just learn how to survive. And now they have multiple, you know, um, properties. They have, you know. Because they had a vision. Yeah. They had a vision, they had goals, they knew what they wanted to achieve and they didn't give up and they adapted and they modified and they achieved their goals. 
Yes. I think in our society today, Marfe, a lot of people quit yes. way too early. They don't mm. like discomfort. Yeah. And people will whinge and bitch about something that they don't like in their life. But until they get uncomfortable about being uncomfortable, nothing's going to change. So if you're if you're overweight and you're whinging and bitching, well, don't go and re- grab another candy bar. <laughs> Do something about it. Go for a walk. Swap the candy bar for a piece of fruit and do something about it. Mm -hmm. But until you're uncomfortable about being uncomfortable, things won't change. And, you know, you may try and help a friend who is facing an adversity. But, again, until they're uncomfortable about being uncomfortable in the situation that they're in, it won't change. It's like taking a horse, leading a horse to water, you can't make him drink. So there's... um, there, there's all those little cliche uh, sayings and that. Anyone else that inspires you in in resilience? Well, when it comes to, of course, going back to people that I, I, I look up to, uh, I mean, in the pageant world, you know, I, I succeeded that, um, not even knowing, but I saw my art go through it and, you know, even just having the, the language barrier, Mm. She's she still represented the Philippines with such wow. um, strength, and even her English was broken. She just, you know, showed the world like whatever. I'm here. I'm representing my country, so it is what it is. If you understand yeah. my English, then understand it. If you don't, I'm still gonna be. Here. <laughs> you know, so I saw her do that. And I, you know, I looking back, my own it. Home, you gotta own it. Yeah, she so owned yeah. it. That's why when I finally were put in that position, I was just like. Well, if she did it, I can, I can do it. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And when, when my grandparents talk about that, they would tell me that, Hey, you came with us. We dropped her off Mm -hmm. at the airport. And I don't remember. I was like four years old, but they had photos. I was like, Whoa, that was like part Mm -hmm. of our family's history that I didn't even realize I was one of the ones that even brought her because she represented the country in Florida, in Miami. So for me, looking back, like just the women in my family just showed me so much strength. You know, even yeah. my, my grandma now, she is 80 plus years old, still wants to sell property because she was a real estate broker and she was also uh, a teacher. You know, yeah. she just smiles all the time. And, you know, I know when we, lo- when we lost my grandfather, it was like a, a, the biggest thing that hurt her heart. But until now, she's still dancing. She's still smiling. And to me, and just like, wow, I don't know how. She's still I would- living life. Yeah, and I, mm. I don't know how, it, how, when I get to that point. Like, I'm in love with my husband so much that I can't even imagine, you know, yeah. that feeling. And just seeing her the way she is, it's just it, it eggs me on. It cheers yeah. me on. Like, live life because it's yeah. it's a gift. We right? only get one life. Exactly. So, yeah, the women in my family, um, even on my 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 dad's side, I, I really look up to them. Because I feel as though I have little pieces of their strength within mm-hmm. me and I represent them. You know, now that I have my own daughter, I mean, she is a tough cookie. Imagine out of all my six children, she's the only girl and she's the athlete. And I'm just like, wow. She's How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, she's up at 6.30 working out, either swimming, doing yoga, cardio, shooting hoops, you know, in the basketball court. And then we'll work out again in the evening. And how old is she? She's 13. Wow. So her goals are huge and bigger than mine. And that's the thing. Is she going to go in a pageant? No, she wants to go to the WBA. That's her her goal. Olympics? I always loved basketball, but my dad didn't believe in contact sport for girls. And my husband's a professional basketball player. So, you know, that's not, that's going to go there. Like, um, but I guess those dreams of mine passed on to her and just with, with both my, strength in, in what mm. how to achieve life and having having a resilience mindset or even a growth mm. mindset same goes with my husband we're all about like hey we got to learn something new we got to be better yeah. you know each and every day it went in all our kids but i feel like it went in her so much more mm-hmm. and that is that because me. she's the only girl um i'm gonna be biased maybe <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, as women, I truly believe we have more strength because 
mentally and physically, of mm. course, becoming moms. Hey, that's a lot. Sorry, of, guys. <laughs> that's a lot of strength that we go through, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, especially here, here mm. and here, mm. we don't have strength in in those areas. I don't know how we're going to get through it. No, I don't either. I don't so many either, people need never. <laughs> yeah, and look, never underestimate the strength that you actually have. I mean, people say to me all the time, oh, you're so strong, I don't know how I would cope with what you're going through. I'd crawl up into a ball and yeah. be in the corner blubbering mess, and I'm like, no, you wouldn't. Yeah. You, you find the strength. It's there. It, it it's is. in all of us. Mm -hmm. You've just got to, you know, look forward all the time. And, exactly. you know, I thought I was in my dream job. 11 years ago and yeah. then I had to stop work that wasn't my dream job I just had tunnel that's, vision right that's what I thought that that's what I was living for was just to do that but there was a bigger picture mm -hmm. and it's, it's quite funny because at the um doctors today I went to my neurologist and got the results back from my MRI and, and I said to him I know it's going to sound really strange I said but I feel that I am far healthier now 11 years down the track um, and going through cancer and everything than what I was when I was diagnosed with MS. And, you know, I'm far more mentally active, even though I have cognitive issues, um, than what I ever have been in the past and, you know, building the resilience and, you know, each adversity that I face. And, and he agreed with me. He's like, you are, you're a different person than what you were 10 years ago. And, and most people are different than what they were 10 years ago. And, and you can have the choice whether you continue to grow or whether you stagnate. And there would be nothing worse to me than having Groundhog Day each yeah. and every day, exactly the same. What's your purpose? What are you living for? Um, you know, my purpose is to give other people hope. Yes. What's your purpose, Marfe? My purpose is to see, like you, other people's passions awakening, mm -hmm. you know, with me either cheering them on, guiding them, because it just goes around in a circle. Yeah. When they're inspired with my guidance, they inspire me to be yeah. better. It's a win-win. Exactly. And it goes in any relationship that you have, whether you're a mom, your children, mm -hmm. whether you're a wife, your husband, whether you're a daughter or a son you know, your parents or your siblings. Mm -hmm. And then it just trickles out in the other circles that you have, the layers, yeah. right? And, yeah. and it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, people always no. ask me this, how are you so positive right now? Because through the years, I knew who to seek support from, you know, until now. And I so her. who did you, who did yeah. you seek support from? I had older, like they became kind of like older sisters and brothers. Yep. That I, you know, I always knew that anyone who was older than me would have a better uh, opinion or mm -hmm. experience, not, not a better experience, but they, they've had the experience to teach Knowledge, me. a little bit exactly. more knowledge. Yeah. So, I mean, I always share this. When you're at school and you're like in the same grade and you're in the same um, age group, right? There's always this friend that's kind of like old soul. But at the end of the day, you're all experiencing the same thing. Mm. So you can't exactly ask your friend in the same age as you, hey, how do you do this? When they haven't even experienced it themselves. So that's where, like, I always impart to the youth, always ask someone who's older than you. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I respect my elders so much because I know there's so, much, so many things that they had to go mm. through without what we have now, like technology, you know, simple uh, FaceTime or mm. Google, you know, our elders didn't have that. They had to go dig up. To a library and look in an encyclopedia. That's my generation too. And I loved it. You know, mine too. it made me work harder. Yeah. And you were right. You know, you're, you're talking about like the resources now is so easy. And yeah. to me, I don't want easy. You know, but it's easy to learn. That's something, something I, I, I want to teach others. Like, hey, when you're comfortable, mm, I don't know. You don't grow. You don't <laughs> you know? grow walk walk up mm. go go and and ask questions don't be shy mm. and just just see you said it earlier like your your kids ask you the most silliest questions there is no such thing as a silly question no. there every isn't. question matters yeah 
Right. And and if you're in a room of other people and you're you're learning something, ask the questions because yeah. someone else in the room will want to know the answers yes. as well. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. There there are no silly questions. Um, only if you're asking uh, the same question that was asked five minutes ago and you were distracted <laughs> and. Get off your phone and, and live the moment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> live, live the moment. And, and that's the thing that, you know, not many people are living the moment. Yes. It's for you the know. ground. <laughs> it's for the people. <laughs> I know. And I was just talking about this in a previous podcast on um, I like to think that I'm authentic. What you see on camera now is yeah. exactly what I'm like off camera. And Mm -hmm. I will put on my socials, uh, in particular, you know, Facebook um, and my personal Facebook, but I have it as open to the world anyway. Mm -hmm. If I'm having a bad day, the world knows I'm having a bad day because that's (laughs) authentic. It's like on Tuesday I had an MRI and I suffered with claustrophobia and a month ago I tried to do it without meds, tried Mm -hmm. to do it without sedation, and that was number 20. So my claustrophobia really became bad at MRI number 13. And then 13 mm-hmm. through to uh, 14 through to 19, I was sedated. And I thought, right, I can do it. I'm going to yeah. do it without any pills. I'm going to be fine. And I lasted 20 minutes and had to hit that panic button. And uh, yeah. I was blubbering mess. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, you know what? I need a little bit of help. And yeah. so I went back to the GP and I got some happy pills and I took them on Tuesday and I'm like, I'm going to be authentic. And yeah. I was whacked out on my brain and <laughs> I live streamed to the world. The world was seeing nice little butterflies. It was great. So I don't know how people handle doing that each and every day because, you know, yeah. two pills and I was like gone. And mm. I got through the MRI, slept through all of it, and I went, all right, that was easier. You know, I, I sought the external help um, mm-hmm. and and faced the adversity and, right. and got through it. And then in six months' time, I've got to repeat it all again, but I've still got mm-hmm. some happy pills left. So um, I'll be taking them before I go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, not everything you can do by yourself. So, yeah, um, so true. Yeah, yeah. So what are some of your passions in life? Many. Uh, I love to learn something new each and every day. Mm-hmm. I love to dance because I feel like I let everything out when I do that. And yeah. I intentionally do that with exercise and I do it with the family. So What I kind of dancing? Um, salsa and mm-hmm. hip hop because there's this uh, program online. It's called Pop Sugar and they have some great, you know, to follow. And sometimes... Uh, they have 20 minute ones, they have 10 minute ones, and it really makes you sweat already. Do they have two minute they ones? They do. They do. I, I think I've managed two minutes. That would yeah. be me. Yeah, and, and then that's the thing. There's no excuses. Like what we talked about earlier, mm. right? Finding your passion, whether it's to give you that time out, whether it's to give you, you know, that extra um, health benefits, mm. um, or even just to spark your well, that joy. comes under self-care. Marjorie. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you have so to I'm have very, self-care. Yeah. I'm passionate about that because yeah. I believe in longevity. And the only mm-hmm. way to do that is to be intentional with your self-care. So right. I'm passionate on learning different ways, you know, whether it be through, I was into the gong meditation, just listening to it, you know, just to, to have that vibration, positive yeah. vibration. Um, I was even into, you know, my... Uh, Hugs. I love hugs. I love hugging my children. It gives well, you, it, say a 30 second hug will cure depression. Yeah. And and that's been the thing at the moment with, you know, COVID and lockdowns yeah. is uh, loneliness kills. Yes. yes. Loneliness is killing people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're all locked away in our homes, which were our sanctuaries, but also became our jail. Yeah. And, some people are finding it hard to reconnect back into society Mm -hmm. because they haven't had the connections uh, before. And that's a major adversity that people are are facing. And uh, a hug, if you get a nice tight hug, you can feel the tension come out of your body. You can feel it. So true. That's why there's people that are professional huggers yeah. <laughs> you can pay someone to come and give you a hug. 
Oh my as God. therapy. Yeah, it's a real That's thing. Feeling. Yeah, you know, I was just talking to uh, a client earlier before we started, and uh, she's in quarantine. So I, I felt that, you know, like yeah. you said, loneliness. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you are by yourself, find things like technology these days, mm -hmm. reach out because you never know what the other person's feeling, whether it's a family or friend or mm -hmm. even a, a colleague, just a simple hi, hello yeah, might mean the world to someone. When right? I was out, walking in covid like and we had to wear masks outside yeah. when we were walking which was ridiculous but anyway let's not go down that path um every single person that i walk past i'd say hello to but yeah. that might be the only time that yeah. they actually saw someone and that would speak to them through the day i know it was the only time i actually got to see yeah. someone face to face because i live alone and um you could see their eyes kind of light up when when you said hello and and now yeah. when i go out walking i say hello to everyone or, or yeah. be like good morning or good yes. afternoon and i keep a record on how many actually say it back yeah oh my gosh just did you and i are just so alike i would make a competition on how many people i make smile yeah yeah and you're <laughs> like oh they're grumpy what yeah. their problem is today yeah. they're in a mood they didn't smile back and they didn't say hello <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And, and that's the thing. If I if I walk past and smile at someone and they smile back or I say hello and they say hello back, that makes me feel good. Yeah, exactly. And, and they feel good as well. That's, a, you know, it's a domino effect. Yeah, it is. It is. So um, so how can people contact you, Marfe? Of course. Uh, thank you, Justine, for the opportunity to being on your podcast. Uh, I'm sure everybody can get to know me more by just listening to to this interview. But yes, you can see me in every single social media because, of course, that's the the expertise that I am very passionate about. Also, talking about passions, mm -hmm. uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. My my name, Mafe Yunam Belasco. Also on Instagram, Mafe B. And you'll see pretty much everything and uh, all my workshops, all my services. My company is Mafe Management Consultancy. So if you just type that in, uh, you'll you'll find my website. And, and we'll have all your contact details yes, in the bio as well. Uh, so uh, Mafe and I actually co-authored uh, a book, Courage and Confidence. I don't know where my copy is. Oh, here's one. You can show for those that are watching on the blog. Here it is, and we will put the link in the bio as well uh, to purchase this book. And, mm -hmm. and look, it's definitely well worth the read. I loved your chapter Thank you. Uh, in the book, and um, it was such a nice thing to collaborate uh, yeah. on that book with you and, and to strike up a friendship as I know. well. I know. Like I know you forever now. <laughs> We're two peas in a pod. Look out, well. <laughs> So um, I've got a couple of quick questions for you because we always end on quirky questions. Uh, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. Yay. Love yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Tea, coffee, hot chocolate or wine? Oh, my gosh. Wine for sure. And red coffee. or white? White. Oh. Or red. <laughs> Mm. Oh, that's all right you can have a bottle of white i'll have a bottle of red so there you <laughs> no go. but there are red wines that i do like right yeah it's a hit and miss you know maybe i when remember I that when you can you, you're gonna convert me well when you come yes visit me and stay with me look out world when that happens yeah uh, we'll do a live <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a live oh yeah <laughs> um how do you have your coffee now black but used to be flat white right. or cafe latte I'm allergic to coffee, so <laughs> 30 right. years since I've... Can you imagine me on coffee? Jeez, I'm pinging up right now. <laughs> now let, alone, let alone putting a bit of caffeine in the system. Uh, and you can survive, listeners, without having caffeine in your life. It's been 30 years since I've had caffeine uh, and can't get back to it. So good for you. Yeah, you know, good skin and, you know, I'll buzz around now. Uh, what's your favourite music? Right now, I'm into, uh, well, I've always been into 
Andrea Bocelli type of oh, opera nice. music, musicals, yeah. um, and also, I don't know if you call it pop, um, Elton John, like that, yeah. uh, Dua Lipa, that's my style. Yeah, cool. What's your favorite food? Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything. We are it's alike. What about that? But if you really ask me, I love, um, of course, Filipino food, uh, Japanese, Korean. I love my pastas, but yeah. I do me- miss my meat pies and my uh, <laughs> sausage roll, like the real sausage roll. But when you come to Australia, you can eat my meat pies because I don't like meat pies. Okay, I, I'm like- not a real Australian because I don't like you a meat know, pie. That's the thing. Moving away from Australia, you kind of miss the food that is always around. Yeah. Vegemite. Oh, I love Vegemite. I have that here. Ah! (laughs) I made sure I found that. My kids Um, are like, eh, mom, what are you eating? (laughs) Yeah. Bone marrow on toast. Oh, really? (laughs) No, I don't eat that. You need to look at how Vegemite's made. Okay, moving right along. I've just wrecked you now forever for Vegemite. It's made okay. from bones. Um, okay. Uh, the toilet paper forwards or backwards? Okay, I'm a hospitality background. Mm. So forward. Forwards. Yeah. With the little fold triangle. Oh. You can <laughs> you cannot fold the triangle if it's back to the wall. Exactly. The wall. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Mafe, it's been an absolute pleasure and a hoot having you on today on the Resilience Mindset oh Podcast. My That's so much fun. I love that. I love the questions. Awesome. 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 <laughs> so remember, listeners, stay resilient until next time. We hope you enjoyed the Resilience Mindset Podcast. Remember to subscribe to the podcast to get your weekly fix listening to Resilience Queen, Justine Martin. Follow Justine on social media at Resilience Mindset or log on to justinemartin.com.au. And until next time, remember, life doesn't get easier or more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient.